All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I've been going over the PowerPoint presentations for Murox HTML5 and CSS3, third edition for the AWD Application and Web Development 1000 Web Technologies class. I'm in, I'm going through chapter 11 of 18 right now. We just finished talking about radio buttons. With radio buttons, only one can be selected at a time. All right. What you may or may not have noticed when we did this is the group all had the same name attribute, but had a different value in here. Checkboxes are not related, so they can each have a different name. So zero, one, or more checkboxes can be checked at the same time. Drop-down list. When you work with drop-down lists, Okay, so we're well, let's assume here that we are going to be using um, we are going to be using a pizza thing. So I'll start making some changes so that looks a little bit better in just a bit. All right. So you can have opt group. That's the text used to identify a group of options. An option, which is the value of the selected option, and selected which is a boolean that causes the option to be selected when the page is first loaded. So again, let's look at the example they have here. We'll make a change to it. All right, so I'm just gonna change this around, but we'll, we'll add this to our form. All right, so bear with me if you would for a moment, please. So we're going to come down here, and again, I'm going to just add what we just put in here. That is this style, but ours is going to change, so don't worry about it. We're going to change it in just a moment. All right. Uh, I like that better. All right, so we've got here style and size. I don't like that. We're going to have just one of these, so we'll have just one option group in here. No sense in making this any more complex right now, I think, than it has to be. So we're going to call this pay method. All right, so the label will be payment method. Here are the value. I'm trying to figure out, oh, this is for inches. I think, but I don't think you need that double quote there. So this right here will say cash. Uh, visa. Let's just say we'll have MasterCard. That's, that's enough. I just want you to get the idea of what we're doing here. So let's save that. This style doesn't make much sense. So I don't think we need it at all there. I think it's just taking up space, to be honest with you. Let's change this from pay method to payment method. Okay. And we will see what happens on our form, then, well, which I guess I closed. Alright, so notice now cash, payment method, cash, visa, MasterCard. See that? And again, I needed a little double quote or a, a couple or a, a BR tag there. Alright, so let's get that in there. That'll at least make this a little bit easier to read. There you go. I think we need two of them for that, but all right, so that's our form right now. Okay, we're gonna add more to it, so it's probably gonna scroll down a little bit. No big thing one way or the other, okay? 
just trying to go through some of the major principles that are discussed in this chapter. All right, list boxes. So the drop down, you know, just allow us, allowed us to choose something. All right, the toppings. So this is what they choose in here is they choose toppings and they use a list box instead of uh, instead of using check boxes. But list boxes have a size, which are the number of items to display for the control. If it's one, it's a drop down list, and that's the default. If it's multiple, there'll be more. So we're going to use this example that's right here. Oops. Sorry. Again, we're going to run out of room sooner or later, but that's no big thing. Please don't let that concern you one way or the other. So I'm just going to keep putting stuff down here. We're saying we want four of these to show at a time. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different toppings. But we're saying we only want four to show at a time. So again, let's take a look at what we have. So there that is. Notice that only four are showing at a time, but we can scroll down to see the rest. And again, I, as I have been doing, I forgot to put a... line break. We'll actually put two of them there to make this look a little nicer. Okay. All right. So a list box displays a number of options you specify on the size attribute. If the list contains more options that can be displayed at once, as you saw, a scroll bar will be, audit will be added automatically. By default, only one option can be selected from a list box, and I did not mention that. I think we've set ours, though. We've set ours to multiple. Okay? So with multiple, what that means is I can say I want pepperoni. Hold down the shift key, and I can click all of them, or hold down on the alt key and select... I thought it was... Maybe it's control. Just the ones I want. Okay? It's the control key. All right, next we've got a text area. And with a text area, text areas have, by default, rows and columns, so you can set up the size of your text area and wrap, which says whether or not your text should wrap. All right, a text area can be used for multi-line entries. Typically, like if you've ever gone to a doctor's office, maybe they have you fill out a form if you're a brand new patient, and at the bottom they might put in things like hobbies. Why do they do that? Well, they might want to know if you're a hang glider or if you're a bungee jumper, etc., if, if they're a doctor type of thing. But if you get a, like a little box that comes in there, that's usually that's the equivalent of a text area. So you can set the height and width. All right. Width, you, you literally can use the rows and cows, but the recommendation today is that you don't do that anymore. The recommendation is today is rather than using rows and cows, you use CSS. So um, what I'll do is I'll come down here, and I will put the rows and columns in, even though it's not normally done anymore. I'll do it anyway. I'll put it right here. So we've got text area. I'm going to say rows equals 6 calls equal 50. You're going to see exactly what it looks like in just a minute, okay? Um, I'll put down here, how about this? Special instructions. We'll put a BR tag there, and then we will put this in here, and just leave it like that. BR, BR. All right, so let's see what we have down there now then for special instructions. See the box that came out. 
I can type whatever I like to type it here. I can hit enter and put it on multiple lines. All right, and if I do that and I submit, that stuff will end up being submitted. All right. The label I've already mentioned to you. Okay, and that label again had that four attribute that I've used, and that's what's recommended today. Doggone it. So, again, I apologize here, but the uh, heat keeps going on a lot. I just showed you the four, so I'm not, I showed you that already, so I'm not going to go through that with you at all. I guess I can show you this. One thing that you get from using the four is with this running, notice I'm just going to refresh it, nothing magical here, but if I click on the label last night, it puts the focus right there so it moves to the particular control. Okay. Accessibility guidelines for labels. Use labels with radio buttons and check boxes so the user can click on them. You always want to try to make it as simple as possible for whomever is using your um, your form. All right. Oh, next they talked a little bit about field sets, I guess. So let's put a field set in here. All right. Field set in legend. So let's take just from our example, let's take just the first name and the last name. We'll do the first name. In, the, in fact, we'll pretty this up quite a bit here. So I'm going to put in here field, oops, field set. Sorry about that. And tell you what, no, we'll just do that, that's fine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a field set and I'm gonna add a legend that says name info. Finish my legend. And we'll finish the field set right after the last name. So right there. Okay, let me grab everything that's within here and tab it over once. So I want you to be able to see exactly what it is we just did. Okay, so notice now how that stuff is all together. We could have done the same thing with City State Zip if we wanted to. Okay? So, and remember, we have put no CSS on this yet. So, as you take a look at it, if it looks a little funky to you, it'll look better in just a little bit. There's their examples, and there's nothing at all wrong with them. We could have done the same thing. File upload, which I'm not going to use right here, but a file upload control. To create one of these, you code the input element with file as the type attribute. This lets the user select a different file. So the accept, that's the types of files that are accepted for the upload. So maybe you only want to allow GIFs or something like that. Multiple will allow you to upload more than one file. So again, Type equal file, okay, and you want to be able to open JPEGs and GIFs. So if you click that button, it's going to show you just JPEG and GIF files. All right, now we're finally up to a little, some work on aligning controls. We're going to do that right now. Try to make this start looking a little better than it does, okay? 
the best way to align controls, all right, which is what we want to do, they say is to use a technique similar to this. So that's what I'm going to do. And again, just because I don't want to be having separate files, so what I'm doing now is not really common, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to say here, label. And I'm going to say float left with 5Ms text align right. This is literally from right out of the book. Okay. And then we're going, I'm, this, I'm taking all these right out of the book so you'll see them in just a minute. For any inputs that we do, that would be the password, etc., all those other ones. We want those to have a left margin of 1M and a bottom margin of 0.5M. All right. And then finally, we don't have any buttons, but we could do that if we wanted to. So I'll leave that out for now. Let's see how this changes the look and feel of our form. So you see it now. Well, that's already looking a lot nicer. You can see how that stuff is lined up. All right. So again, it's not perfect, but it sure looks a lot nicer than it did. <coughs> so if a form includes a series of controls and labels that identify them, you can align the labels by floating them to the left and setting a width that provides for enough space for all labels. A series of labels is typically more readable if the labels are right aligned, the text in there. All right, let's get rid of that legend. It's not that it's terrible. It is by no means is it terrible. But, and also, I'm going to keep this, but I'm going to get rid of the, the list box because we're already doing that up here. All right, so... Let's go back into here. Let's get rid of the legend that we put in. Okay. And remove that. And I'm going to get rid of the drop-down list, which is here. Now, it's again, this is still by no means is this perfect. It's still, it's still a work in progress. All right but I think it's gonna end up looking even nicer than it did just a second ago. Okay, so we've got that. It's not too bad, really. Okay, now they tell us next on page 395 that we wanna add some additional CSS. So again, I'm just gonna add what they have and it's gonna look a little funky probably, but that's still fine. All right, so they say here, body, And they have font 90%, and they want there to be Arial Helvetica Sans Serif. What does that mean? That means in here, I want the font to be 90% of its regular size, and I want the font type to be Arial if possible. And if not, Helvetica possible. And if not, just default to some sans serif. Let's put a margin in here of 20 pixels. Now, one thing you notice is I've slammed all these together. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can't put a space or even more spaces. So there you go. That looks a little nicer. All right. Let's do some more work with our labels. All right, we've got our text aligned right. We still have our float left. Let's let's add some, again, I'm just adding the stuff they're showing in the book here on page 395. So color, navy. They want the width to be a little bigger. They want it to be 8Ms instead of 5Ms. Float left, width, font weight bold is what they want also in here. Okay, for our inputs, 
margin left and margin bottom, but they want a width here too of 15 M's. And when you have the focus on an input device or some, some input thing that's in there, so when your button or whatever it happens to be, when it has the focus, then we want to put a border around it that's two pixels and that's solid navy. All right. And then finally, and I'll make sure I've got this, but for our pound submit and our pound reset, Let's also, for those, we'll put some a width of 7Ms, a box shadow around it, two pixels, two pixels, zero, and navy, a background color, silver and I think that'll be enough all right again I'm taking this right from, from page 395 in the book and you can see when I do and I make the changes and refresh how much different it looks all right how bigger my buttons are that's all in yellow notice that whatever's got the focus is now got that etc sorry all right, so we've done a lot of formatting in here. I was going to try to do one more thing, and that is under the body here. I was going to say color navy. Why am I doing that? Because I want to see if that's going to turn the color of most of this stuff to navy as well. And you see it does. Not everything, but you can see that. It looks a lot nicer, I think. To, I'm going to put a font weight bold so it looks more like what we have up here. Yeah, this is by no means perfect. But as you can see, it's coming together fairly nicely. Okay, that doesn't really look too bad. I don't like that payment method and the way that's done. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it. But what I'd rather do for the payment method, because to me that looks real clumsy, for lack of better words. So where you've got payment method down here, all right, I'm literally just going to come in and before we do this, I'm going to put in a label. won't put a label in here I'm just gonna do it like that okay so let's see if I made it better worse or either so check right here okay now it says payment method I don't know why that's pushed over like that maybe it's because I've got I've got too much text there so let's just say instead of payment method let's just say payment see how that looks okay well it's right justified by default but that's no biggie okay cash visa and MasterCard all right so I should be able to left justify that if I want to because <clears throat> I think that would actually look a little bit nicer See, this is the problem when you start doing this, and that is uh, you can get just off on tangents, okay? So that label, I'm going to say here, 
ID equal pay. All right, then I'm gonna come back up here and say, we just put it by the label. So I'll say pound pay. text a line left. That should push it back over, I would think. And as you can see, it did. Okay? So again, by no means is this a perfect looking form, but it looks a lot, a heck of a lot nicer than it did when we started. All right? I should also probably take this these two things and right justify those so they, they end up getting over here and maybe even put another blank space there. Okay, and I didn't put a, a, a colon after zip code. So again, what I'm doing now, when you start doing all that stuff, I like to call it and say you're wordsmithing because basically what you're doing there is you're making, yes, you are making changes and yes, they're important things, but that said, they're really not that important in the mainstream of things. All right, so I'm gonna make this a label. For equal crossed. And we'll put an ID here. I right, now we'll put a class here. Class equal, call it left. Uh, righty. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing down over here. Actually, I'm just going to copy this and then change it from crust back to toppings. And for righty, the line right all right got our thing in here for zip code now, oh that isn't at all what I wanted so I'm gonna get rid of that that is just terrible okay that is not good that's not at all what I wanted so no problem you see how easy it is to add them? It's just that easy to remove them. Since I'm not going to be using righty, I really should get rid of it from here. And then I can remove it from here and here. So I'm going to leave the label in there. That shouldn't hurt anything for that label and for this label. So let's see. They're going to be back in the wrong justification, but that's okay. I, I could I could do it. I have to probably think about it a little bit, but we could get it to work if we wanted to. Why am I getting each one of those on their own line? I'm not sure right now. Okay, I guess I don't want that to be in there as a label then. Okay. So get rid of that. Just make it crust. Get rid of that. Just make it toppings. Now, we could come in here. There's a lot of ways we could force that into being blue. I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it the way it is because I think that after we do this, it's going to end up looking a lot nicer and look more like it did before. There we go. All right. These are now left justified, which I don't like, but hey, it's, it's really and truly okay. Okay. All right. Sorry to get off on a tangent like that. Tab index and access key, and that or tab order and access key, that's on pages 396 and 397. All right, let's take a look at those. In fact, let's set, we can set the, um, Set the tab order. All right, so it's a set a tab order for a control. You use a value of negative, I'm sorry, of zero or more. If you don't want it to be in the tab order, you can give it a value of negative one. So 
fact, let's not do this. We'll just look at what they show here. So if you had access keys, if you did a, an Alt-F, it would put you in here, an Alt-L would put you in here, and an Alt-E would put you in here. And for tabs, basically it just allows you to tab. Let's see, we do actually do have a tab order now, but the tab order by default is the order you had when you put the, the stuff in. So you can see it actually is going pretty much to where we want it to go. See that? So that's the natural tab order, but that actually works. So we won't set the tab order, or I should say, reset the tab order. All right. Accessibility guidelines, as it says here, setting a proper tab order and providing access keys improves the accessibility for users who don't move a mouse or don't use a mouse. The tab order for a form is the sequence in which controls receive the focus. And these access keys are shortcut keys. All right. The next thing that's discussed in here is the HTML5 attributes for data validation. And I'm going to start that as a new lecture in just a couple minutes.